Hey everybody, I haven't been making too many videos lately. Uh, May was morel mushroom hunting season and I took advantage of every weeknight and every weekend that I could to take advantage of the season and I did pretty good. But this video is about the rain tower and it's been about a year and a half since I released the original video and the how to build it video and lots of people have been building these things, adding tips and modifications. So that's what this video is going to be about. So keep watching and you'll learn something. Well, one major concern about the rain tower is keeping the reservoir cool. As you know, with hydroponics, you need to keep the water temperature between 65 degrees and 75 degrees to keep the oxygen in the water. And that's kind of hard to do in the summer. So people have come up with a couple ways. On my forum, on the my website, tomorrowsgarden.net, uh, people showed how they buried the buckets to keep it cool. Um, uh, Gina Raggin in Florida has wrapped her buckets. She built four of these towers. She wrapped her buckets with aluminum foil to keep them cool. And she's been growing in the summertime in Florida. So it, that worked out pretty good for her as you can see our results. I'll post a link here. And also Mike Walker who's been a pioneer in this project. He's been coming up with new ways and better ways to create these towers. And I suggest you check out his uh, web page here or his YouTube channel. I'll post a link here. And uh, what he's done is create a homemade system that will keep the water temperature at about 53 degrees, which is a little too cold, but in the summer I'm sure it would heat up into what system he has. So I'll post a link to his video here. A few weeks after I released the rain tower video, people were already starting to build these things even before seeing the how to build video with their own designs and improvements. And one of the greatest improvements is this totally enclosed net pot holder. And this can be used on the existing ones that I built, if you have already built these. And it fits on there just like that. All you have to do is cut a little bit more on the inside and it holds the net pot at a good angle and it still gets wet. And um, Mike Walker has a good video on this. I'll link to you on that. But yeah, all you gotta do is scrape off the old glue, sand this a little bit, and I'll show you how to cut these just like Mike instructed us to. All right, what I've done here is cut a five and a half inch piece and measured from one end to here, and that's four and a quarter inches. Then I line that up with the blade where the blade comes down like that and then I put a little piece of tape here marking where that is. And then at this point just take it and tilt the whole thing 50 degrees, line it up with the tape and boom that's going to be your cut. Okay after it's cut we have two identical pieces no waste at all. And that works out very well. And thanks to Mike Walker for coming up with this method. A few months after I released the original videos, I started getting comments from salespeople for the commercial version of this tower that costs over $500. And what they were saying is that everything I put into this is not food safe, which is false, because this bucket and the lid are food safe. They're from the hydroponics store. And the fence post, the PVC fence post from Home Depot or Lowe's is made by the same company. I gave them a call and they said this PVC is safe. It's a PVC LD PEA, which is not known to leach toxins at all. And all these three inch pipes that I used are schedule 40 and that is totally food safe. So they have no argument, that's just something they're trying to sell you guys that is totally bogus and trying to stir up some sales from the posts under the video. A few people were concerned about the rain tower being knocked over by wind or if somebody bumped into it, but when it's full the base weighs about 40 pounds and is pretty sturdy as you can see. Okay, probably the number one question I've been getting on the rain tower, which I didn't put in the first video, is what nutrients am I using? Somebody wrote me about a week ago saying that all their plants died in the rain tower and it turned out they were using a miracle Grow. 
and that's not for hydroponics that's for dirt and it's not very good to start with anyway so uh, anyway I'm using Maxagro I have been using it and now a company has sent me this to try out in the, the uh, rain tower it's uh, called Ocean Solution and it contains 90 different elements and 100% natural and it's safe around children and pets grows plants faster, bigger, and more healthy, and more pest resistant. So you can't beat that, and it also makes things taste better. So I'm putting it to the test to see if that is true. So let's get on with it. All right, now for mixing the nutrient solution. I've been running an air stone with this air pump and this five gallon bucket of water for about 24 hours, and it gets all the chlorine out when you bubble it up like that. And um, what I've been using for lettuce for the past year and a half is Maxigrow. I was running it at 500 ppm, but when uh, Ocean Solution contacted me, they said cut that in half and use the other half with their nutrient. So that's what I'm going to do here. And to measure that, I have this TDS meter. You can get these off of Amazon. Um, this me measures uh, parts per million of each nutrient. So. Uh, Let's do that. All right, I'm going to leave the air stone running as I add the nutrients. This is the Maxigro. I'm going to put it in there up to 300 ppm and then give it a few minutes to mix up so I can take an accurate measurement. I'll run 300 ppm of Maxigro and 300 of the Ocean Solution. Okay, I just pulled out the air pump to get an accurate reading and it looks like with the Maxigro we're about 350 right now. And I'll leave it there and go up to 650 with the Ocean Solution Nutrients. Okay, I got it up to 673. That's close enough. I'll leave it there. Well, here we are at day 35 from seed. I always plant my seeds directly into the uh, Rockwell cubes. And everything is extremely healthy, dark green, and really full. So I can't complain about that. So let's give it the uh, old taste test here. Okay, we're going to test out this lettuce, and I bought some store-bought lettuce to compare it to, and already you can see a difference in the color, so let me open up the store-bought lettuce and put them side by side. Okay, as you can see, the lettuce on the left is my buttercrunch lettuce that I grew in the tower with Ocean Solutions Nutrients, and on the right is the lettuce that I bought at the store and there's quite a difference in color and uh, let's give it a taste test okay first the store-bought lettuce let's see how this tastes oh just ordinary lettuce I'll try this out It does have a bit stronger flavor. And that's about it. Actually, it's pretty good. Here's an analysis that Kennesaw State University did comparing store-bought produce to produce that was grown with the Ocean Solutions. And you can see that the vitamins increased quite a bit. If you'd like to give Ocean Solution a try, go to oceansolution.com and when you check out, Enter the discount code tomorrow's garden and you'll get a discount on your order. So go ahead, give it a try. Well, here's the real taste test. We got these kitties in here and a puppy looking after them. Oh, look at that. Well, that's all I have for you this time. Until next time, take care, everybody.